Hey ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope you're having a great week. And today we're going to continue with Seneca's letters from Stoia. And it's going to be the letter 34 on a promising pupil. So let's get started. I grow in spirit and leap for, your, for, for joy and shake off my years and my blood runs warm again. Whenever I understand from your actions and your letters how far you have out done yourself. For as to the ordinary man, you left him in the rear long ago. If the farmer is pleased when history develops so that it bears fruit, if the shepherd takes pleasure in the, in the increase of his flock, if every man regards his pupil as though he discerned in him his own early manhood, what then? Do you think are the feelings of those who have trained a mind and molded a young idea when they see it suddenly grown to maturity? I claim for you, I claim you for, for myself. You are my handiwork. When I saw your abilities, I laid my hands upon you. I exhorted you. I applied to God and did not permit you to mash lazily, but rose your continually. And now I do the same, but by this time I'm cheering on one who is the race who is in the race and so in the in turn cheers me on. What else do you want of me then? you ask. The the will is still mine. Well, the will is in this case is almost everything and not merely the half. As in the proverb I task once begun is half done. It is more than half, for the matter of which we speak is determined by the soul. Hence, it is that the larger part of Godness is the will to become good. You know what I mean by a good man, one who is completely finished, whom no constraint or need can render bad. I see such a person in you. If only you go steadily on the bend on to your task and see to it that all your actions and words harmonize and correspond with each other uh, and the stamped in the same mold. If a man's acts are out of harmony, his soul is crooked. Farewell. So we're going to have one more letter today. It's the letter 35 and it is on the friendship of kinder minds. Kindred minds. When I urge you so strongly to your studies, it is my own interest which I am cons consulting. I want your friendship and it cannot fall to my lot unless you proceed as you have begun with the task of developing yourself. For now, although you love me, you are not yet my friend. But, you reply, are these words of different meaning? Nay, nah. more, they are totally unlike in meaning. A friend loves you, of course, but one who loves you is not in every case your friend. Friendship, accordingly, is always helpful, but, but love sometimes even does harm. Try to per perfect, perfect, perfect yourself, if for no, no other reason, in order that you may le learn how to love. Hasten, therefore, in order that, while thus perfecting yourself to my benefit, you may not have learned perfection for the benefit of another. To be sure, I'm, re I'm, I'm already deriving some profit by imagining that we too shall be of one mind and that whenever, whatever portion of my strength has yielded to age will return to me from your strength, although there is not so very much difference in our ages. But yet I wish to rejoice in the accomplishment fact we feel a joy over those whom we love. 
even when separated from them, but such a joy in light and fleeting. The sight of a man and his presence and communication with him offers some, something of living pleasure. It is true, at any rate, if one not only sees the man one desires, but the sort of man we de one desires. Give yourself to me, therefore, as a gift of great price, and that you may strive the more. Reflect that you are yourself a mortal, and that I am old. Hasten to find me, but hasten to find yourself first. May progress, and before all else, endeavor to be consistent with yourself. And when you would find out whether you have accomplished anything, Consider whether you desire the same things today that you desired yesterday. A shifting of the will indicates that the mind is at sea, heading in various directions according to the course of the wind. But that which is settled and solid does not wander from its place. This is the blast, a lot of the completely wise man, and also to a certain extent, of him who is progressing and has made some headway. Now, now what is the difference between these two classes of men? The one is in motion, to be sure, but does not change its position. It merrily tosses up and down where it is. The other is not in motion at all. Farewell. All right, guys. So, thank you for joining me today. See you tomorrow with the next letters. Bye.